Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Wigan Fan TV. Uh, myself and Matt this evening, David, is joining us. Um, if things don't go according to plan, I know you'll be thinking, when do they ever? Um, but just bear with us a little bit. Matt can't see me. Um, so Matt is watching on a delay so you can see what's happening. Um, and we're using a newer version of the software that we normally use, which allows us to do fancy things like, for example, I can put Matt as a small version in a little box in the corner, which Matt will see in about Don't 10 seconds. Don't put me in a box. Uh, I'm putting you in a box in a corner. Uh, I'm not too sure what no. this one does. Oh, that swaps us around. Lots of little things. So if you just sort of see us uh, sort of moving around the screen, uh, just bear with us a little bit. Um, you, as you always, know what getting... I really like, Sean? What really what impresses like? me is this new Zoom function. That yeah, is it's good, that, isn't it? Could do that all day. But then I could just sort of put you in the corner like that and I might just keep you there. So if I move to that side a little bit and you can just be like on my shoulder, you can be like my conscience. And actually you you as my conscience is a terrible, terrible idea. Um and then we've got the DW Stadium as a background as well. So lots of lots of things. Um but as always get in touch um on the comments we should be able to still show them. Yep, yeah, there we go. So just testing that one there from from Jimmy. Um so yeah he's still come through on the comments so please get in touch. That's if we're broadcasting to anybody. Who knows? I might have just put this into some private group somewhere and nobody sees it. Um, so, yeah, David will be joining us ever so shortly. Um, but let's get straight into it, Matt. Um, it's not okay. a week um, at Wigan without some kind of off-field controversy. Now, there hasn't really been any this week other than uh, Talima Tautai uh, has now left the club. Y your initial thoughts on that um, and, and, and in comparison to the way that, I guess, Craig Mullen and, and Zach Hardacre have been um, dealt with? Um, I, I'm a bit sad, to be honest. Um, Talima Tauta is the sort of player, um, or sort of person, to be honest, that I'd, I'd have liked him to have had a standing ovation at his final game. Um, and I feel that we, we've been robbed of that as much as, as he has. Um, because it, is he not? I, I mean, the okay, the the driving and uh, the influence of drink thing aside, is he not a lovely bloke? He is, and you know, I've, I've spoken about this many times, and, and we have on on the show, haven't we, about his family uh, and the amount of work that they've done in the community, and all posted on on the page before. And um, Mark, who obviously joins us on the show um, as well from Super League Pod, he knows Ange um, Talima's wife as I do in from the fan engagement board when she was involved in that initially but it's just the work that they sort of did in the community that as people coming from obviously from Sydney and then from Wakefield they just embrace themselves within the community and the way that um, Talima's time at the club has come to an end I think it like it's just a massive shame isn't it for everybody involved it is. um, do, you, do you feel like this I mean, it's not convenient for Wigan. I mean, you know, we're not condoning drink driving at all, and and you know that should have been dealt with in in, dis in a dis in the discipline um, that Wigan have chosen to do it. But do you feel that there's a bit of a contradiction here between Craig Mullen, Zach Hardacre, and, and Talima Tausai, the way that, that that it's been dealt with? How, has it was it definitely the club's decision just to get rid of him like that, or? You know, because the, the press release I read, it, it was mutual consent. Did he feel that after that he just wanted to go? He, he just couldn't face being around here any longer? You know, maybe guilt, shame, I don't know, which is a pity because, yeah. you know, yes, it's a bad thing to do. But I, well, one of the things I like about the club is – it, it's ability to rehabilitate players and it's willingness to do so. Because I don't believe in just writing people off. And I know people can say, oh, that's a really convenient thing to say. But I, I think that is the right thing to do. And I don't get the sense that the club has just washed their hands of him. Now, maybe he wasn't going to be at the club next season and that's part of it. Um, I, I don't know. I like I say, I would have liked to have seen him stay for the rest of the season at least so we could wish him a proper farewell. So, Stephen's just put on that. I know you can't see it, Matt, but um, do we think the potential impact of his visa application coming up? Um, so, this was reported by, by Phil Wilkinson, wasn't it, about 
um, yeah. during, when he was in the magistrates, either Talima or, or one of his or his sister mentioned that if he was convicted, then it would have implications on his visa. He was moving from whatever it was, a working visa to a living, I don't understand what the visas are, um, but he was moving from, from one to the other. It would have implications, so he could potentially be deported. So there may be a convenience aspect, I guess, not just for the club, but for the for the Tao Tai family, that they don't have to go through that process, perhaps with the Home Office. Obviously, we're only speculating. Um, and I know oh, they, they've always serious. wanted... Yeah, exactly. And they've always wanted to go back to Sydney, which, which is the home. Um, but yeah, I think that that's perhaps the overriding feeling about all of this is no matter what you thought about him uh, on the pitch, he, he did a fantastic, um, he had a fantastic impact on the Wigan community off the pitch. Um, and he, um, I, I will always remember his try um, Hull away in 2016. And when we were in those luminous green kits, uh, as we sort of got on our way, uh, to a grand final victory, and I feel like that was almost a catalyst that that put us onto those um, onto that semi final victory. Was it against Warrington, uh, and then from there, uh, obviously winning the um, sorry, this winning the grand final from there, and that's the sort of memory that I will always have of Talima. So, um, yeah, we wish him well uh, in the future. Shame to to see him go, of course, um, but that along with Gabe Hamlin, along with Liam Paisley, who had departed the club for Barrow early in the week has left salary cap space. So where do we spend that salary cap space? Do we spend it? Do we bring Mitch Clark in now, Matt? Yes. I, I can't see any reason not to, other than maybe Castleford won't let us. Um, but he's he's not playing at Castleford at the moment, is he? He's not. He was there, He was farmed out to Halifax, wasn't he, at the weekend to play against Bradford. Mm-hmm. So, you know, they've, they've uh, not taken that too well that he's chosen to go to a big club next year. Um, What's Castleford's so said, win rate been like since they dropped him? Um, since well, since that game at, at the, uh, the what was it called now? The Jungle, the Menderhose Jungle, Weldon Road dot com yeah. forward slash uh, still falling. I'm not too sure. They're not being they're not being very good, have they? If we're if we're being honest there. Um, so why. yeah, Mel says Wigan today printed that Lamb is considering bringing him in early. We we both said last week our first sort of sort of reasoning or, or knowledge of seeing Mitch Clark was probably that game at Weldon Road, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, you would like to see him in early, I guess? Yeah, yeah. I, I think I, we, we're a bit lacking in, in forwards at the moment, aren't we? Um, and just to have the, the squad bolstered that little bit, um, I think that's all we need right now. So then the other side to that, which George um, rightly points out here, is if you were cast, would you let him come early? He says, I wouldn't. I mean, that's got to be part of the thinking, hasn't it? The fact that he's at Halifax, um, he won't be at Castleford next year, so why do they want him in, in the ranks? I guess the, the counter-argument to that is that would then free some salary cap up for Castleford to perhaps bring somebody in that they wanted to bring in. Uh, and there's rumours that they're looking at uh, various players at the moment as well. Mm-hmm. Um, as we've seen, the domino effects happen today, which we'll mention, but uh, I, I knew we'd get something from Rob. <laughs> I didn't know if Rob was going to be watching the cast fan. So what did you say? Clark's a good player, but he's only able to do 10 minutes stints. That's what somebody said on uh, Twitter to me a few days ago as well, is is his, you know, that that is his biggest problem is is his fitness. Um, I guess we would like to have that problem, wouldn't we? And, and see, you know, yeah. let's get him in our squad and, and see whether he does 10 minutes for us. But, you know, we, we, we're we short of that impact player. One of the things that may happen, though, Matt, you know, we've obviously Ben Flowers out injured at the moment. Would you be concerned about the impact that bringing somebody in like Clark would have an impact on the development of Partington and Smithies who are in the team at the minute? I wouldn't be too concerned, no, because that they're professionals. They all know that you know it's all down to to form and training and and basically bringing somebody else in wouldn't necessarily mean you're going to play them ahead of somebody. Um, it's just another person in the mix. So you've got to up your game a bit and prove that you're better than them. And the uh, the transfer window, whatever you want to refer to it, is uh, certainly uh, spicing up a little bit uh, at the moment, which we'll, uh, which we'll, like I said, we'll touch on uh, just in a moment. One of the other players, um, Matt, that has been rumoured to be in, and, and this all comes from, uh, last week, uh, they did an interview with Adrian Lamb after the game on, on Wigan TV, uh, and they left some footage in after it. And that footage was of West Tigers 
Um, so why have Wigan on their laptops or whatever at the John Smith Stadium got footage of West Tigers there? Um, so that sent the rumour mill uh, into overdrive. And Russell Packer, who, if you remember, hit fame for uh, urinating on a pitch when he was playing for New Zealand Warriors. Uh, mm-hmm. I think he's been done for assault previously as well. So, you know, he fits the, the mould for overseas signings to Super League. Uh, he ticks those boxes. Um, how, how are you spelling you see... mould in that instance? <laughs> <laughs> but to, to sign a player, I mean, Rob will love this, the, the cast fan. Imagine if we sign Russell Packer, somebody who's got a reputation for urinating on the pitch. I mean, it's, that's a... That, that, for me, is the ultimate 2000. That would sum 2019 as a season up, I think, for Wigan. <laughs> I think that would be perfect. In fact, I, I'd want that as a, as a framed picture. Um, but didn't... Uh, am I right in thinking that Harrison Hansen once had, had to wipe his bum on a pitch? I, 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 I could have dreamt that. I mean, I, I, I know that Gary Lineker once had a, an incident like that uh, when he was playing for England, was it, or Tottenham? Um, I'm not sure. I don't remember Harrison Hansen. Um, but yeah, we might. It might, might have been a that. dream. <laughs> a good question that's been posed here as well is, is you know, how would Packer get a visa? Well, yeah, that's a good point. He'll just I mean, take Talima Tau's eyes. <laughs> yes, it would just. Tau's eyes walking out, he'll pass him the visa, say, there you go, mate, sorted. That's yeah. how it works. Okay. Like I said, I don't know how visas work. You've just informed me. I appreciate that. Um, and I'm sure it is as simple as that. And um, we still are waiting um, to, for David to join us. I know he's having problems with his uh, with his laptop. It's all this new new software that we can just sort of do things like this. It's silly, isn't it? Uh, I've just made you small again, Matt. I know you don't know that. Um, <laughs> right. Okay. So next is let's have a look back at what is another victory for Wigan. Twenty two thirty eight victory over at uh, the John Smith uh, Stadium. Mm-hmm. Uh, Neil Byrne says Harrison Hampson definitely did wipe his derriere on the pitch. Nice way to put it. Uh, so there you go. I you, knew you it. Weren't, I knew you it. You weren't making it up. Mm. Um, yes. Uh, but people are suggesting that you may have been dreaming about it. Stephen says, what are you dreaming of, Matt? Um, I mean, that is something that, yes, you could. Uh, I've had not weirder on the pitch. ones. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Um, let, Apparently, let's not call this it. week I woke up thinking I was in the crystal maze, locked in. <laughs> Who, what did they just leave you in? Uh, apparently, so I, I woke up telling my wife I had to get out because I needed to get a crystal. All right, okay. I, and crystal maze, I, crystal meth could have been anything. It's... Absolutely. But the thing that I like about that is that whoever you were was in the dream didn't deem you worthy enough to exchange no. a crystal to save you. Uh, right, David is ready to join the broadcast. Let's yes. throw him straight in and see whether he can see us. Yeah. Not yet. He's, he's kind of there, but he's not there. I'll give him a few more seconds and then we'll, we'll get David on. Um, right, so let's uh, let's get on to reviewing the, the Huddersfield game. Mm-hmm. Matt, a really, sometimes a really difficult place to go to, isn't it, the John Smith Stadium? We, we've struggled there um, at, at times. Had a really good start. We seem to let Huddersfield back in again, doing what we, Wigan have been doing this season. Then we sort of take, took it comfortably. Then we let them back in again. We're still short of that 80 minute performance, but your, your thoughts on a, on another win? Uh, well, to, I mean, to, I didn't go. I've I've only seen the highlights, and um, going to be honest, uh, there appeared to be more sand than than Blackpool Pleasure Beach. There, it, maybe they thought <laughs> we were signing Russell Pack. Put the sun down just in case. <laughs> that was the only explanation I could think of. Maybe. So well, yeah, another, another had, good... had it really badly rained minutes before. I don't know what they're doing. Obviously, the football team player there, don't they? Um, and it's uh, obviously close season for that. But um, yeah, it, it did look an absolute mess, as it says on the screen there. But you, you, I guess, do you think we're getting closer to, to the Adrian Lamb style of player that we, we mentioned last week? Yeah, yeah. It's it's. I think we're still seesawing a bit. So we'll see some really good defence and some really good attack. And it's kind of, we, we're seeing one, then the other. And it just needs to level off a bit. And I think we're getting there. I think we're getting to the point where we're going to see, by the end of this season, you know, no, no matter where we finish, we are going to see what Adrian Lamb's kind of idea for Wigan is going to be. 
And that, yeah. that in itself is quite exciting. Don't care about Old Trafford. That in itself is an excitement to me. I'll tell you what is exciting. I know you can't see the comments that I'm putting on the screen, but I just Mason Leather, this is exactly what you want. He's just put a post on that just says witness. Thanks, Mason. And, and thanks for watching, actually. Um, but yeah, thanks. I mean, you know, just shout random random teams at us and we'll put them on the screen. Is he using um, that as an expletive? Has he just stubbed his know. toe and gone, witness? Yeah, I, mean, I feel like he's trying to insult us by just saying, you know, just throwing the witness word at us and following it with some emojis. Um, Mel says, wasn't very inspired by my first uh, Huddersfield visit after your review last week, but I enjoyed the game so much. Best of, <laughs> best of the season, atmosphere-wise. See, I stood up for Huddersfield last week, and you, you saw yeah. the fact that one Mel actually listened to you and was expecting, took your review to heart. Um, Mel's obviously never been to Castleford because of your review. Um, and we, like we were saying... Off, um, when we were just off air before, is we kind of scuppered all of this now because, well, we're at home. Are you going to do Wigan reviews in the future or are you just going to visit a different watering hole in Wigan and do a review of that? Sure, that sounds like a very good idea. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, what do we? Very good. Locker's best game for a long time uh, and we dodged the delays on the M62. Do, do you feel like Sean O'Loughlin's turned a corner a little bit in terms of his one his performances, but are we now utilising him a little bit better? He seems to be playing a lot longer minutes, uh, and strangely, for at the age that he's at, he actually seems to benefit from being on the pitch longer um, than being spelled in, into you know whatever spells he, he was doing previously with, with Smithies coming on or Club or Isa. And he, he, do you think like we're getting sort of uh, prestige lockers back to to where he should be? Hope so. Um, it, is it match fitness? I mean, uh, has he been injured a bit? Uh, some kind of niggling it? I, I know you could argue he's had that throughout his whole career. Um, but, you know, may, maybe there's been a reason for him being a bit off colour this season. Um, but, yeah, by the looks of it, he's he's getting back to the, to the lockers we know and love. I uh, thought Farrell was excellent and went to lose forward with lockers at prop. Uh, that's something that we spoke about last week, wasn't it? Where where Farrell was going to play. Is he going to play on the left, the right, through the middle? Where's Lockers going to go? We sort of joke that he's been trying to go to prop, I think, for the past four years. But, I mean, we're sort of just lumping them in the middle and telling them that they play a particular position. I mean, they're all there and thereabouts, aren't they? Um, mm. Rob says, Wigan fans never come to Cass. Um, yeah, there's a reason why, Rob. Um, we don't all have our injections in time, I'm afraid. Um, Tim says, and this is one of the big things that, that's happened, I guess, over the past couple of weeks, and, and a really good thing is, is Chris Hankinson. Um, we spoke about him signing that new deal last week, but his goal kicking has now created, I think, a, a fantastic um, problem, hasn't it, for, for Adrian Lamb. Dan Sargison, who's called the best fullback in the world. So we've got Dan Sargison to come back into the team at some point. Um, do you put him back into his preferred position, I guess, where he's been playing well at fullback? You've got Zach Hardacre, and that has a knock-on effect for Hankinson. Uh, you know, t- what, what are your thoughts on Hankinson and, and his goal-kicking ability, which has proved vital, really, over, over the past couple of weeks? It has, yeah. Um, I, know, I, I, I can see where, where Tim's coming from with, with that, but just calm down, calm down, it's OK. Um, <laughs> I, I think... You know, we've got three very good players there in in Hardacre, Sargentson and Hankinson. Um, it's it's a great position to be in. Um, I don't think all of them will be with us next season. Um, but at the moment, yeah, it's a headache for Lamb. I'm looking forward to seeing how he solves it. Glad I'm not making that decision. Tim says uh, goal kicking, goal kicking uh, makes him undroppable, which is you got to give credits to Chris Hankinson. He, you know, mm-hmm. to obviously we, he was a goal kicker at Swinton that we mentioned uh, last week. But one thing that he has done is is basically made Adrian Lamb have a real issue now in, in making yeah. that decision. Uh, and like Tim says, uh, it make, almost makes him undroppable um, because he's, he's gone he's away an and developed. He's a robotiker, isn't he? Absolutely, and you know that is a thing where all of a sudden he's giving himself another sort of attribute that contributes to the team, perhaps over somebody else when, when that decision's being made, when the big games come along. So, yeah, fantastic for, for Chris Hankinson. Uh, lots of love for Hankinson as well. 
Uh, I think people have been really impressed with the way that he's committed himself uh, over the past few weeks. Uh, and I think he's turned into a bit of a fan's favourite at, at the moment. Um, the other sort of incident from, from last week was uh, was Willie Isa. Lots of people talking about what happened to, to Willie Isa. Uh, if we, I, what I should have done is just put Josie's comment on without any context, uh, which says nothing happened to Willie. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, that, that would have been a little life. bit better. <laughs> that would have been a little bit better. Um, but, yeah, it's uh, Willie Ice at the end of the game, uh, obviously was dragged off the pitch. I think he was sort of uh, cited incorrectly, but I think his reaction wasn't particularly great to the referee. But he, he hasn't uh, been cited in the uh, in match review, so he, he, he's fine yeah. to play at the weekend. I like um, how he was taken down by the doctor. <laughs> the yeah, the Chris, club doctor rushing on to grapple him. Oh, that was great. <laughs> Chris, uh, yeah, um, Chris, Dr. Chris Brooks getting involved at the end of the game. But the thing that I like about Chris Brooks is he's always... What? What is he always? I, I, I think either I've lost my sound or you've, you've stopped speaking. Is it me? Is it you? Gone. Hi, everyone. Right, Matt should be back with us in just a second. There we go. Matt, you broke it. I, I do apologise. <laughs> Honestly, I mean, apparently, no, it was you, and I put you into, a, I put you, I put you into a small box now because of that. Um, Am I in the naughty corner again? You're in the naughty corner, yeah. Um, so if David's watching, David, you might have a bit more luck with uh, with this stream than, than the last one. Um, but yeah, we, we might not have much time uh, until we get kicked off here. Uh, it's every time David Bailey is on the show, this happens. Stu is right. He's not even managed to get on screen and he's managed to... He's, he's probably logged in on the other, st other stream now, David, trying to yeah. contribute. Um, right, let's talk about the, sort of the strange developments um, over at... Um, Leeds and I guess Salford, um, mm. with Salford being our opponents this week. Robert Louis has gone to Leeds uh, to until the end of the season on loan and then signed a two-year deal after that. Lola here has gone to Salford on loan and then a two-year deal agreed after that. Matt Parcell has gone on loan to Hull KR until the end of the season, but no deal at the minute just in case they get relegated. Uh, and then Sean Lund, a person who was in hospital uh, in January, and would probably never was thought to have never been able to play rugby again. Uh, is back at Leeds for his second spell. Thoughts on that, Matt? Very confusing, isn't it? The the Salford Leeds Hull KR switcheroo. Um, uh, I, to be honest, I'm a bit I'm a bit lost. It's hard to follow. It's it's like watching Boris Johnson talk. Um, it does make Leeds look a bit desperate. Um, it, Absolutely. you know, and yeah, it's hard times for them, isn't it? And I'm going to be honest, the the thought of a of Leeds facing relegation, it hurts to say it, but come on, Catalan, um, no, it didn't hurt at all, didn't? <laughs> but, um, do you, do you know what? Do you do you remember um the the Wigan Leeds game on TV a couple of weeks ago? Um, th there was a shot yeah, of I mean, Gary I've, and I've Kath Hetherington. Because... Yeah, th there was this kind of right. one shot of Gary and Kath Hetherington together. And I thought they looked a bit like old school communist dictator couple um, as reality dawns on them moments before they face a firing shot squad. Uh, like the the, the Chowcheskerringtons. And, and maybe they need to get as drastic as that at Leeds. Um not, not a literal firing squad, but but getting rid of them. Um, I mean, Whereas is, this whole it, switcheroo thing, I mean, it's it's it does stink of desperation, doesn't it? I mean, it, it, it is. Does. You know, like Michael says here, Leeds last throw of the die, throw of the yeah. dice. I mean, if you remember back in two thousand six, we, we kind of did that, didn't we? With, with Dobson, we Newton. stole Dobson away from Catalans, and, oh, and, and yeah. got that deal done. Yeah, because you know he was a form player from Catalans. He was on loan there. We then sort of stole him, and, and he in effect kept us up. So you know we, we we can't sort of sit on our high horse and sort of say I can't believe we're doing it because we. Yeah, did it. yeah, it's we nice can. That we, we can. Yeah, 
it's nice that Wigan aren't doing it. Uh, it's nice that we're not I, in that I like, situation. I like this idea of the last throw of the dice because it is, it's a bit gambly, isn't it? It's, it reminds me a bit of, you know, that, that game with the balls under the cups? Not, not the one you play in the back. Um, okay. where, where they kind of shuffle all the cups and the balls around. Um, it's, it is a bit like that, isn't it? This switcheroo. I mean, it's just, it's, it feels like they're just trying as many different things and hoping that one of them will stick. You know, David Ferner, Richard Agar, let's get rid yeah. of Watkins and try and make a bit of room. You know, Matt Parcell is a fantastic player. And to, make, mm. to get rid of Parcell, and somebody just alluded to it, um, it feels like they're going for a big, uh, a big overseas signing, perhaps. Um, they've got, what, the best part of five, six weeks to get that done. Uh, if they are going to go with that. Um, a parcel made way for, for Robert Louis, yeah, so that's right. Um, so he needs to free an overseas. It's, you need, like, a, an abacus, don't you, to keep up with this? It, like it's Robert a lot Louis of balls under those cups, balls. isn't it? A lot of balls. It is. Um, um, and it's whether those balls will be will be up at the end of the year. I mean, you know. Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> yeah, who, who knows? Um, all that money that already looking like a balls up. It really is, um, but it does have direct implications, obviously, for Wigan this week. Uh, mm -hmm. With us now facing uh, to Ilula here uh, again, uh, mm -hmm. rather than Ro Robert Louis. W would you rather play a team that has now lost one of their key playmakers? Obviously, Jackson Hastings is still there, but. Or do you think Lula here now he's got a point to prove, he's got Jackson Harrison to play alongside, arguably better players to play alongside. Um, do you feel like this helps Salford or, or naturally does it hinder them because they've lost one of their best players? Uh, if I was a Salford fan, I'd be very worried because it's better the devil you know. Nice. I mean, one of the, I guess, yeah, well done, Matt. Um, one of the big things, I guess, if you are a Salford fan, is the fact that Robert Louis was going to be leaving at the end of the season. They managed to rumour to get about 60 grand for him now, which for a club like Salford that had the financial difficulties over the past few years, you know, you've got in exchange a fantastic player on his day, Lola here. Everybody remembers his performances uh, in the World Cup. He's, you know, he can be a class act. It's just, I think, getting the best out of him. So, yeah, interesting to see how he goes on Friday night. Uh, let's briefly, before we get on to the game itself, uh, mention Armed Forces Day at the DW Stadium. I know David wanted to speak about that and he's not logged in yet. I think we'll just we'll give up on David for, for tonight if he joins us um, even better. Um, but I think he's having trouble with his laptop. So Armed Forces Day. So what does that mean? Well, uh, if you are or have been in the Armed Forces, uh, you can claim a free ticket uh, for the game, which is, again, another fantastic initiative um, from the club. Uh, and one thing that we spoke about last week, or, or I spoke about, uh, was a fan village. Now, a lot of people have been asking me questions, is a fan village actually happening because there's nothing on the club website? Well, yes, I think so, um, is, is, a, is, a, is the easiest answer. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I haven't been told anything that it's not happening. Um, I'm not doing the, the stuff uh, on Friday. I wish FM are doing it. I'm, I'm doing it next week, apparently. Um, they'd already booked professionals in something like that so um, for the following week um, so they're just giving Wish FM, Wish FM a bit of like you know experience this week so they can you know they need it feel like they're involved yeah absolutely um, so yeah I, I believe that, that the fun village is still happening I have no reason to think that it isn't um, you will see a profile in the programme this week from everybody that's involved in the fan engagement board as well uh, we've had to give little profiles of what we actually do um, so yeah, um, look out for that. Nothing exciting on my behalf, um, really. Um, you know, how long have you supported me? that kind of stuff? Um, but yeah, so Fan Village from about six o'clock over in Robin Park. Like we said last week, the big thing from that mainly is that we're putting money that could be going into the DW stadium. We're actually putting that into the rugby club rather than that being um, sent to the football club. So hopefully we we'll see a bit more reinvestment. And um, people talking here about Danny Richardson. And always skipping this, but th this was a room. I don't know if you saw this, Matt, on, when all the League Express and Weekly and all that come out on, on Sunday. It, it felt like a bit of a pie in the sky to link us with Danny Richardson. But you, your thoughts on that? Um, I I think it was pie in the sky. Uh, I, I, all I know is I read it and I thought, oh, okay, I could just about get my head around that. Sounds interesting. Um, and then it was scotched, wasn't it? Yeah, Phil, Phil Wilkinson said uh, it's a non-starter. And, and you can imagine, you know, perhaps it's agent talk. 
uh, trying to get Danny Richardson a bit more of game game time at centre rather than being farmed out to, to Lee. Um, you know, I feel like with Wigan's club and, and Wigan's name is perhaps being used uh, there a little bit for um, some dealings by the agent either to get a new contract for him or to uh, make the Saints realise that they've got a dream team player. He was in the dream team last year and he obviously can't get in the team at the minute. Uh, Craig says, damn, I could get a free ticket. Wonder if I can get down. Yeah, any anybody that's been get in the armed forces, is in the armed forces, just get down. Yeah, have a free ticket. Get down, Craig, uh, get down. Yeah, wow. I'm going to I'm going to replay that to you. That, I'm, that little snippet of you just saying get down, I feel like we could make that into a, into a bit of a song or something. That, that could be the new... Uh, the new rap for for next week. Um, What's that? You saying you want rapping? (laughs) Yes, apparently so. We're going to talk about the Salford game in just a second, uh, I promise, uh, seeing as this is entitled the Salford preview. Um, But there's a question here from Martin uh, about the Saints game not being on telly. So it was the first time since 1994, 1995, I can't remember, Bill Corp put on. Um, First time it's not being televised because the televising Hulk are against Leeds. Um, Thoughts on that, Matt? Uh, a, a bit gutted, to be honest, because um, I can't make it to that game. And I thought, well, at least I can bank on it being on telly. Uh, but I can't, yeah. can I? Thank you very much, Sky. Cheers. Um, yeah, so, I mean, I think it has two effects, doesn't it? The likes of, of yourself uh, and me that, that now live you know, a few hours away from, from Wigan, and obviously saying Tallinn's, yeah, it scuppered the opportunity to be able to watch that on telly. But I think it is quite refreshing, the fact that there's a bit, there's a derby that's not on telly. Hopefully it increases the gate uh, and people that want to go there. And hopefully it puts, uh, yeah, Stuart says, who cares? Mm-hmm. It gets us a good crowd. And yeah, hopefully that's that's what it does um, there. Um, just before we move on to to the Salford game, uh, which has is at home, Mel's coming here. It's been that long. T- it's been that long since we played at home. I've forgotten how to get to my seat. So, Matt, one, do you can you remember where you sit? I can, yes. Okay, I, I I know where I sit, but I won't be there this weekend. Okay, that is one reassuring to know that you know where you sit. Two. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of people that sit around you were devastated when you said you can remember where you can sit, but three <laughs> are now elated that you won't be there this weekend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. Just because you, there won't be any selfies or trying to get people to rap with you uh, this weekend, at least. Right, Salford. So we've spoken about, obviously, Jackson Hastings, fantastic player. Uh, hopefully it will be a Wigan player next year. Salford just above us in the league. If we win, Catalans lose, we move up to fourth. The Wigan wobble crisis, it's all gone. If we win, what happens if we lose? Oh, Matt, that's the problem. Why are you even bringing that up? We're, Wigan are not going to lose on Friday night. But they're a tricky team. This is Jackson Hastings' inspired led team that doesn't really have anybody that's exceptional other than Jackson Hastings in the side. Mm-hmm. We've got Jake Bibby who's playing against us, who we've signed for next year, who's been. Uh, scoring lots of tries recently, uh, they, they're doing they're doing okay, um, and I just feel that we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves. There's all this talk, and I've just mentioned it. If we win and results go our way, that we could be fourth. Listen to yourself, Sean. Sure yeah, listen to yourself. You're saying we're getting ahead of ourselves, thinking we're going to beat Salford. We are going <laughs> to beat Salford. What do you like? I do. Get a great man. Out loud. When you say it out loud, it sounds ridiculous, doesn't it? Um, as it probably did in 1996 when they knocked us out of the cup. Um, <laughs> but the, yeah, the, the, these things happen, don't they? But do you, um, so you expect to, to to see Wigan continue? We've named the same squads. Uh, obviously, Bullock was mm-hmm. rested last week. Would you like to see Bullock come in? And if so, who is the unfortunate party that drops out? It's difficult, that, isn't it? Because you know, you you would think that it takes a Partington or a Smithies, and, and mm-hmm. you know, dropping Smithies doesn't sit com- sit comfortably with me. No. I think Partington uh, has done really, really, really well. Uh, you know, never at Yes, that's the person that you drop. Well done. Right, mm-hmm. we're going to frame that that little <laughs> caption where you've just suggested that Navarrete should be dropped. Um, okay, but Navarrete out, Bullock in. Do you think? I think that could well be it. Yeah, I think you're probably um, right with that. As, as much as I hate to say it, there again, yeah. I'm not sure. Did, did Navarrete have a bad game last week? I'm I'm not too sure, but you know, Stuart's saying um, drop number fourteen. 
Mr. Navarrete. This, yeah, I'm with you, Matt. Drop Navarrete. Get Navarrete out of the team. Let's get. I'm just making these comments up, by the way, just because I know that you can't <laughs> see them. Um, but yeah, people saying we've beat them away twice uh, when we were bad, so we should win on Friday. Yeah, that that's brilliant logic, but unfortunately, logic doesn't work in, in sport a lot of the time. But uh, you, Matt, you, you score, you talk score prediction. We've played <laughs> them. It feels like we have played them a lot this season. So you could argue that statistically they're, they're going to beat us at some point and the more often we play them, the more chance that's going to happen. Um, however, I, I, I think we're going to beat them. I, I, I think we're going to beat them by about 12 points. OK. Um, you happy with, with the structure of the team? Do you expect anything to, to change too much? Uh, come Friday, would you like to see anything change too much? Uh, somebody's uh, Martin's put on here, drop Willie Isa. Now, Isa, I think, has played every single uh, game mm-hmm. so far. Um, do you think that would be an option, particularly with Greenwood being on the bench last week? Um, Greenwood could come in for Isa and then you put Bullock on the bench. Do you think that's a consideration or do you think he's been consistently plateauing? Consistently consistent. Yeah. Well, he has, hasn't he? He's, um, I, why, why are we trying to do Adrian Lamb's job for him here? Let's not make it easy for him. Let, let's leave it up to Adrian Lamb to decide. That's what he's paid hey, for. I, I like Adrian Lamb. I'm just trying to help him out. You know, I think if, I mean, he obviously he watches this every week because he feels like he's, he's lacking a little bit sometimes on the ta- tactical mm-hmm. side of the game. Uh, and he obviously wants to pick that up from from two people that know absolutely nothing about that. Uh, it feels like it's refreshing. Um, so yeah, he, he's you know he's an avid watcher, um, and we obviously have a direct influence on it. So if you see Navarrete dropped on Friday night, you are responsible. Yeah. Matt. Oh God, I feel really bad about that. <laughs> well, you should do. Um, so yeah, it's, you said you think you'll, we will win by about twelve. Um, yeah. We haven't done this for the first time, but first try scorer, Matt. First try scorer, I think Burgess. Yeah, I, I was going to say Burgess. I think we need to start seeing... He's not been quite the same player, has he, since he was he picks up that injury uh, round about the Challenge Cup time. And we've not quite seen him hit that height that we saw just mm-hmm. before those injuries where he was scoring over a, a try again. So it'd be nice to see him get back on there. Lots of, uh, I mean, you know, we're Wigan fan TV. We're talking to Wigan fans. There's a lot of optimism uh, in the score predictions. But most people uh, are going for a, a decent Wigan victory, hopefully building on last weekend. Matt, you, 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 um, there's nothing behind you. So you've got nothing for us tonight. There's no, no rap. No nothing. There's no rap. There's no... There's no guide to Wigan. No. Just my sweet face. I mean, do you want to tell us a joke? Don't know any. (laughs) Actually, I I came up with a cracker. Better the devil you know. You can't beat that. I mean, you can't see me, but I'm disappointed, Matt. You, you, sorry, you, you built. We've built it up over the past eighteen months. People tune in just just to see the end of the show. That's that's where we peak. That is where we but, peak, and that's where everybody drops off. Uh, and, uh, and I feel they drop off long before then. <laughs> <laughs> Right, Matt, thank you uh, for persevering uh, with this new software. Hopefully everybody sort of made their way across uh, from the first stream. Otherwise, they just sort of sat there watching a still <laughs> image of the DW Stadium full. Going, yeah, this is pretty good. It's probably better than, <laughs> than, than this, to be honest with you. Um, but yeah, hopefully we'll have another Wigan victory to be talking about next week. Matt, thank you so much for, for joining me. Uh, David is lost in cyberspace, but that's his favourite place to be. Um, so we will be. We'll see you next week when we preview Wigan's next game. Who the hell do we play next week, Matt? Okay, ah, okay, ah. That's what. That's a big game, isn't it? At home again. Mm-hmm. We'll be sick of being at the DW Stadium soon. We'll be. <laughs> no, fa- we'll be so. one. Yes, we'll be getting comments on here about how we want our own ground and all things like that. And do you know what the refreshing thing is? Before we go tonight, I'm going to end on this bombshell. Not one comment for the first time this season in the comments has been get Escaray in. Whoa! I I Witness. feel that we I feel like we have now turned the corner. The season is the season has started for us. Nobody has said get Escaray in. 
So yeah, that I feel I feel like that is a sign that we're gonna have started to maybe just click into gear. No friendly I'm, snake. No friendly snake. <laughs> Matt, thank you so much for, for joining me. Thanks everybody for watching and we'll see you next week. Bye.